Hello everyone and welcome to the Arcade. This is the first video in a series on how to do a Zookeeper scratch build. Uh, this is also my first YouTube video, so please leave your comments and suggestions below. Thanks. So welcome to the website. Uh, website's pretty simple in layout. We have a little bit of background information about the site. We have some special thanks for people that have either submitted corrections or plans and recent updates to the site. Navigation's pretty easy as well. For the purpose of this video, we're all going to be talking about the first two, the actual arcade cabinet plans. Um, so the plans are either organized by the title of the game or by who made the cabinet. The reason I also put them in by who made the cabinet is quite often manufacturers would share the same cabinet plans across multiple titles. So if you find that your cabinet plans you're looking for are missing, you may be able to find a uh, same set of plans for under a different title as well. Uh, you can also just search by keyword for uh, what, what games you're looking for as well. So in this case, we're going to be looking for a Taito cabinet, and the game is Zookeeper. All right, so we're now on the Zookeeper page. A couple things to note before we do the download. Um, title at the top, uh, who submitted the cabinet. So what you'll find is that a lot of the cabinet plans were submitted by uh, a small group of people with it. And so you'll get more familiar with how they actually draw up the cabinet plans and uh, which ones you've had good experiences with in the past. So worthwhile noting with it. Probably the biggest thing here is has the cabinet been cut from the drawings? And really the proof in the plans is really if the cabinet's cut and it assembles, um, that's a huge, huge win. And, um, you know, you may have the most detailed, beautiful looking uh, drawings out there, but unless it's been cut, you don't actually know if everything fits together perfectly or not. Um, construction type for materials. Um, estimated accuracy. Uh, so ac estimated accuracy is really based upon the detail level of the plans and uh, has the uh, cabinet being cut from the plans with it. So you'll find that if you have a really good looking plans where you can spot check and make sure everything kind of fits together like you expect it to, um, all those plans will be scored in the 80s. Uh, once you have a cabinet that's been assembled from the plans, um, they, they will be scored in the 90s. Um, so what you'll find is that usually your plans with your lower levels of detail are going to be, you know, in your, you know, if it's been assembled, it will be in the 92, 91, 93 range with it. If there's a higher level of detail, usually it's in the 95, 96, 97 range with it. The cabinet plans will never be given a 100% score unless they are the actual blueprints from the manufacturer. So, you know, 98, 99 is about as good as you're ever going to get with it. And like I said, the proof is really in the assembly. So as we scroll down here, you'll see some of the previous pictures of things being assembled, so that's always good. Um, in this case, it's a little bit interesting with the Taito cab. Um, this is probably one of the worst examples I could have picked to go through and demo, just because there is um, a lot of special hardware with going on. So if you've never dealt with a Taito cabinet before, you know there's brackets everywhere that hold it together, and there's a ton of screw holes, and you need to have basically all the screw holes aligned to the brackets, and you need to have your special hardware to be able to um, assemble the cabinet as it was done originally by the manufacturer. Um, so as a result of that, uh, we have the original cabinet plans, which is listed here. And then we also have one that's labeled as no hardware. And basically, these plans are ones where the person would be gluing, screwing together a cabinet in traditional means. And you wouldn't be using the metal brackets as you commonly find on the Taito caps. As you scroll down a little bit more, you'll find that this is broken down into original drawing, which is the one that has all the hardware requirements and the no hardware requirement. Um, you'll find that also there is a VCAR Pro file and there's a DXF file. Uh, the VCAR Pro file is specifically made for CNC machines. Um, it's using it's compatible with uh, Vetrix products with it, so you're going to be either looking for VCAR Pro or Aspire, so you would need one of those two products um, to be able to open and use these plans for your CNC machine. Uh, the reality is, is most people don't have CNC machines and they're mainly just looking for the, the DXX, DXF or the CAD files. Um, the CAD files uh, are AutoCAD files. There's a ton of different applications that allow you to open them. 
and uh, the CAD files basically are fairly universally compatible with it. The CAD files contain all the measurements of all the pieces inside, um, so you'll need to have some type of CAD viewer to be able to open up the files and actually check off the boxes to make sure you can see what the measurements are for, for the pieces you're trying to cut. Um, I also do this files to print section, and basically what I usually wind up doing is taking the profile of the cabinet, the side of the cabinet, and printing it out to a, to a to scale PDF document. And the idea behind this is if you don't have a CNC machine, like most people don't, is that you'd be able to take this to your local local uh, sign shop or printing shop, print the file to scale, and uh, basically use it as a template for cutting out the sides of the cabinets. Um, I do this usually for the profile of the cabinet, and if there's any other really hard to cut pieces where it's uh, funny curves or funny pieces that go to assemble with it. Um, if it's the straight, you know, base shelf type type uh, pieces with it, um, usually you're going to get those measurements from the CAD files, and uh, it honestly gets expensive to print these things out as well. So um, try and limit it to just the parts that you absolutely need to print. Um, if there's interest, I can do another video on how to actually use the print files. But basically, what you do is you take your file, glue it down to your piece of wood with some type of spray adhesive with it. Uh, cut it out with a jigsaw, smooth it off, sand off the edges until you get right up to the edge for the, uh, the print file. And then you'll use basically a uh, router bit with a, with a roller bearing on it so that you can make a copy of that to the second set of, set, second, set of uh, second side of the cabinet. Um, you'll also find that there's some drawing specific notes on here with it. As I said, this Taito cabinet is a dado construction, which means that it has a lot of special cuts, which makes things a lot more... Um, challenging as far as reading the plans, knowing what you're supposed to be doing. Best reference always is to have a cabinet on hand. Um, strongly, strongly, strongly recommend having a cabinet on hand. If you're trying to cut one of these uh, without having something to reference, I do have some pictures here to try and help you figure out how to put the things together. But really the secret is to have a set of, have a cabinet on hand that you can go and physically reference. All right, so that's basically the, the layout for each of these cabinet sites with it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the plans are shared uh, by the manufacturer across multiple cabinets, so you'll see these listed here as well. Um, in this case, um, since I have a CNC machine, um, that's what I'm going to be showing this time. Um, so I'm going to be downloading the VCarve profile with no hardware. Um, basically because uh, the Zookeeper has uh, full side art on it. Um, it's it's uh, kind of a nuisance to go through, apply the side art, and then cut all your holes afterwards to, to get everything to line up correctly with the hardware to assemble. So we're going to be using no hardware on it, and we'll be using uh, screws and glues to assemble the cabinet. Uh, when you go to click download the file with it, just simply click on it, and hopefully it'll just save it for you at the top here. Um, some people have problems downloading the files where they wind up getting a large text file. Um, basically, the, this is when you're downloading the DXF files. Uh, basically, the CAD files are just a text file with, with coordinates in them, essentially. And so if you do want to that problem, you can right-click on it and say download and save as. Um, 